On our study of the Bible, we left off last time on Revelation. And I don't mean the book of Revelation. I mean, we come to the, uh, the specific study about the revelation of the Bible <coughs> and who God is and who the Bible is. What authority? And John 21, 25. And there, and there are also many other things which Jesus did. And that which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that, has, that should be written. Amen. Imagine if John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Peter, and James. Imagine if all the disciples were to gather everything that Jesus did. Imagine going to church Sunday morning. And the pastor would get up, okay, the fifth track of trailer, in the middle of that track of trailer, on pallet number seven, on the right side, the second stack. I mean, that, that's what it would be like. And when we read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it is not everything that Jesus Christ done. There is more. So... The miracles that Jesus did are all the miracles that only God could do. In fact, the Messiah had to do, rendering to the Old Testament. So Jesus Christ, who is God, who is the Messiah, performed miracles, and not all the miracles are recorded And he had to perform those miracles, being God and being the scriptural Messiah for the Jews require a sign. So the revelation that we see this time is the testimony and the extraordinary, miraculous life of Jesus Christ himself. And it began with the miraculous birth and conception and birth of Jesus. Mary in her womb was conceived not of a man, but of the Holy Spirit. That the Messiah is, in fact, is the Lord God. And the Lord God could do these miracles. The life and testimony of Jesus Christ outside what the Jews say today and outside what the Jehovah Witnesses say, Jesus is God. Now about the revelation on how God communicates, he has spoken directly to some individuals in the past. Men wrote the Bible. Absolutely correct. So men wrote your textbooks. Absolutely correct. But the Bible and not the textbooks are inspired by the Almighty God. And I tell people, yeah, true. The Bible was written by men. And the pen is the man. And the ink is the Holy Spirit, the blood of God. People say that God does that today. God talks to people today. And if he does the exact same thing today, then we truly have no quarrel about the whole or final revelation God has written in the written form. There is no argument in contrast to the Mormon who claimed that God spoke directly with Joseph Smith. And what we get from Joseph Smith is we got no prophecy. We got a race of people in North America that their names and tribes and places have no archaeological, archaeological evidence. Their fortitude to have faith in that God has spoken to them they are undermined what is justly called direct revelation in the Bible. 
God speaks to us. Do not believe that he is giving direct revelation that he wants men to put into the Bible today. God has finished the Bible. There is no extra missiles. There is no new, newer testament. It is finished and complete in 66 books of the Bible. In the book of Genesis alone, God spoke directly to people. But he does not speak as he spoke to Joseph Smith. He does not speak, though Allah and Michael doesn't speak to Muhammad as his claim. The Bible has signed, sealed, delivered, delivered, and is complete. And what people are trying to do is trying to put themselves when the Bible times and trying to make it today that God speaks to them and he doesn't for revelation. Now God speaks to me and God directs my life but it's not something, all right, this needs to be added to the Bible. This is another testament. Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but fulfill. For verily I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall not shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Prophecy. In the Bible, we have fulfilled prophecy. In the Bible, we have unfulfilled prophecy that will be fulfilled. What is the difference between the Bible and Joseph Smith? Joseph Smith has no prophecy, and if there is a dare of prophecy, it will not ever be fulfilled, quite like the prophecy of the Bible. Jehovah Witnesses, well, Jesus was supposed to come 1914, Jesus was supposed to come 19 blank, and then 19 blank, and that's a false prophet because he did not come at those times. And matter of fact, their prophecy overwhelms the scriptures when Jesus said, no man knoweth but the Father. So when they make their prophecies, they are overrunning what the Bible says and contradicting the Bible, which a revelation of God would not contradict what God has spoken, what God has written. Now we get psychics and fortune tellers and horoscopes and they may hit it on the spot but they're not going to hit it 100 percent and it, uh, with them it could be so a very important person is going to get married this year really when god's prophecy includes and details details so what if in the Bible, we had prophecy that was supposed to be fulfilled 2,000 years ago and wasn't. If that were true, in just one occasion, we would decline the whole doctrine of the Bible as the word of God. In other words, if the prophecy of God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit if one prophecy failed, then the whole entire Bible failed. God is 100% or nothing. This year, somebody important is going to get married. This year, somebody important is going to get assassinated. All right, somebody got married, but no one got assassinated. You failed. Half does not work with God. Whole. 
There are prophecies that have already been fulfilled about nations of the world that were in black and white before they were. What's that? There were prophecies that was going to happen to nations before them nations were even nations. And there were prophecies while they were nations to the end of the nations, to the final conflict of those nations. And they came to be or will come to be 100%. The revelation of God through prophecy, 100%. Not 99.9999999, 100% every detail of every detail that God and Holy Spirit wrote down and spoke and inspired men to write 100% no less. And there were prophecies on the first advent and the coming second advent. Well, this prophecy has not been fulfilled. It will. 100% it's not the proper time it isn't that there are unfulfilled prophecies that weaken the authority of the Bible is they have not been fulfilled yet we got to study to show thyself to prove unto God a workman that needs not to be ashamed rightly divine the word of truth it has not happened it will happen there are 48 prophecies of the first advent of jesus christ and all 48 are fulfilled to the dot to the tittle to the uh what's the other word i forget jot you couldn't get one person to have 48 Never mind, 24, take it, 24 detailed prophecies of an event and get all 24 correct on hand. Yet 48 prophecies about one man, his birth, his birthplace, his life, his death, his suffering, his resurrection, all came to be. If there was prophecy that was already to have taken place and it did not take place, then we don't have a reliable, correct revelation of God. There is no option for such an error. You say, uh, let me do an let me do an addy. And Lord God forgive me. Let's say a prophecy about Jesus Christ's first coming. He was, he was to be virgin born of the city of David. Well, let me add to it. Forgive me, Lord God. But let's say there was a prophecy that, that the Messiah would be born of rich parents. Of great wealth. And then the entire Bible would be would be an error, and we we could throw it out. We don't have to listen to God. You say, what makes you say that, Stiley? Because when Mary brought her offering, according to Leviticus chapter twelve, she brought the birds. And when it says for a woman who's given birth to to a, ch a child, a sin offering, if she could not bring a lamb, she could not afford a lamb. She used to bring a turtle dove or a pigeon. Mary brought the birds. She was not wealthy. And yet the Catholic Church dresses Mary in fine, rich clothes. And that was not Mary and Joseph. And that's not a prophecy. And the prophecy of Jesus said, three days and three nights as Jonah was in the heart of the earth, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. If Jesus was in the earth an extra 24 hours, like Lazarus, he's four days, he stinketh. If Jesus would have been in the grave four days, or even two days, then prophecy failed. And there's error. 
And when you look at the prophecies of the first advent, and you lay them out on, on a piece of paper, that fulfilled, that for 48 prophecies fulfilled 100%. And you better believe the prophecies that have not been fulfilled will be fulfilled 100%. God has told these people, it has to be the truth if he is God or he's not God. There is no lying. God cannot, will not, and is unable to lie. Hebrews 6.18, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that's set before us. The indications are, the, are that entirely that is in that book will be fulfilled. God did not lie to us. That which is not fulfilled as of yet has to be in a relationship of prophetic prophecy in the future because God doesn't lie. Well, I read in the Bible it says Jesus Christ is coming back on a white horse. Well, he came in he came into Jerusalem on a donkey. That's not a horse. Contradiction. No, it's not a contradiction. Though Zechariah or Zephaniah says he shall come upon an ass's colt. First prophecy. The prophecy about Jesus Christ coming on a horse, that's yet future. That has not happened yet. That is prophecy yet to be fulfilled. The Book of Mormon. What is clearly impossible to fulfill. And what is totally inaccurate. So that it cannot be from God. The Book of Mormon lies to us about a group of people with names that archaeologists will never, have not, and will not ever find. They're lies. God cannot lie. Hebrews 1, verses 1 and 2. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in a spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets prophecy has in these last days spoken unto us by the son capital s whom he has pointed heir of all things by whom also he made the world the creation we talked about the creator last time now we're putting creator and prophet the Bible knows direct revelation from God. God spoke. How's that? And he did it. God did it by prophets. God directly expressed to men who penned it down under the leadership and root and the authority of the Holy Spirit. What's lacking from textbooks or any other book on the market is the authority and the inspiration and the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Now, when men say, yeah, men wrote the Bible, they don't have the authority and the knowing of the Holy Spirit because the Bible says the world can't obtain the Holy Spirit or they're lost. To comprehend why cults and religions directly say, well, there you have it. We have the same. You know, as the Bible, as for, but is it God authorized? Everything that these are cults and religions. And you get the Catholic Church, and the Catholic Church authority is the Pope, the Cardinals, Traditions, or the Councils. Not the Word of God. And the Catholic Church, you have 
the, the, the Pope, the Cardinals, the Councils, the Missal, the Catechism, and there are places where they contradict the Bible, where God cannot contradict himself because God cannot lie. Somebody is false and it's not God. And that only that goes for the Catholics and that goes for the Mormons, that goes for the Jehovah. That goes with any religion or cult where what they said and what they do violates the Holy King James Bible. And there is a contradiction. Yes, what they believe and what they authorize that has not be what God believes and what God authorized through the Holy Spirit. It says, hath in these last days spoken. The last of what days? It's essential to appreciate that God is set in a time limit. And I'm having trouble with the time. With the events in my life. I'm impatient. He is going to stop doing. There is going to be a time. This is the end. The last of the, la uh, the last of these days. In which he spoke. And then he's going to close the book. I'm done speaking and writing. And inspired. 66 books of your King James Bible. No Apocrypha. We'll get into that much later on. No new, no, like the, the Mormon, what? I can't think what the Mormons call their book now. Something testimony. What is that? They are not of God, not authorized by God, not the leadership of the Holy Spirit of the inspiration. God signed, sealed, and delivered to us the inspired word of God, though he speaks to us. But when we're looking at the Bible and any extra curricular additions to the Bible, no, they're done. It's finished. It's complete. And he said, by his son. The four Gospels are about him. The son. The Lord Jesus Christ. And the son did not write those books. Has in these last days spoken. By his son. The son did not write the Gospels. The son did not write the book of Acts, Romans, Galatians, Ephesians. So what book did the son write? The book of Revelation. Dictating. To the apostle, the beloved apostle John, Revelation 1 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The titles of the, of the book of Revelation wrongly said the revelation of Saint John Divine. That's wrong. That's in great error. Because Revelation 1 1 says the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. To show his servants things that would shortly come to pass. <coughs> excuse me. Prophecy. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto the servant, to servant John. So there we have it. We have. In Genesis. I mean in, in, in Hebrews. We have, let's go back, God who in sundry times and diverse men spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets and have in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he has pointed heir of all things. And what is the very last thing to be spoken by the son? 
the very last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. In the book of Hebrews, in black and white, before that time, and it could be possibly 20 to 25 years before that time, declares that God in the last, in those days, which he speaks, directly is going to speak by his son, through his son, Jesus Christ, and the very Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, and what we're talking about the Revelation. So the final word of the Bible is the final book of the Bible that is not the revelation of St. John Divine. It is the revelation of our Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. And you run that reference back to he Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. When the book of Revelation was written and finished by John, by the inspiration of the angel, of the inspiration of Jesus Christ, and under the authority of God, when we come to the book, end of the book of Revelation, even so come Lord Jesus, the Bible is signed, sealed, delivered, accurate. We don't need no book from North America. We don't need no book from the Middle East. We don't need no book from Europe. We don't need no book from the Orient. We don't need no book from Africa. We need the one book of God, the one book of Jesus Christ, the one book of the Holy Spirit. And yet God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus used men to write the Bible, but under the authority and leadership of God, of the root of the Lord Jesus Christ and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, do we have the scriptures? How do you know that textbooks, unlike the Bible, because every two to three years, the textbooks have to be written because there are errors. The Bible has not meant to be rewritten because there are no errors, though it has been added and subtracted, and we'll get to that later by men of the modern Bibles because of their sins, they rewrite the Bible and add and subtract so they can continue sinning and approving each other and not God. So the book of Revelation, there are more labels and names of Jesus Christ in the Revelation than any other book of the Bible. The Lamb. The tribe of the Jew, lion, the tribe of Judah. The representation of him, Jesus, is entirely distinct than the than the four gospels. There is the life and ministry of God and man, Jesus Christ. The book of Revelation is the inspiration and the revelation of God, Jesus Christ. He is in his glorification. He's in his glorified, resurrected state in the book of Revelation. He's man in the Gospels. He gives us a clear look into the future to the eternal state. We see more of heaven in New Jerusalem than we see in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We got more revelation of what is yet to come than the life and ministry that Jesus had on this earth. Jesus at one point said, listen, I, you don't understand earthly things. How are you going to understand the heavenly thing? In the book of Revelation, he explains more of the heavenly thing. And it's very hard to believe that if this is the last of the days in which God expresses, and he does it through his son, it would be very hard to believe that anybody otherwise could be added to that.
What more could Joseph Smith add to us than the book of Revelation? After Paul writes all the epistles to the churches. After we get all the earthly ministry history and facts of Jesus Christ, man and God. And we get the, the, uh, the epistles of James and John and Peter. And we have the final revelation according to Hebrews 1, 1 and 2 of the revelation of Jesus, not John St. Divine. What more could Muhammad add to us? Nothing. What more could somebody peddling the watchtower to our front door? Nothing. What more could the, the book of Jabez? Nothing. The power of prayer, nothing. Your life could be wonderful and great with the happy Jesus. No. The book of Revelation, we're talking about Revelation, we're going to pick up more next week. Maybe one more study, one or two more studies. On revelation but the greatest revelation of the Bible Hebrews 1 Hebrew, <coughs> I want to keep see, saying Hebrews 11 1 Hebrews 1 1 and Revelation 1 1 and I want you to take your Bibles and I want you to go to the book of Revelation and where it says the revelation of Saint John divine I want you to cross out of Saint John divine and I want you to pencil in Jesus Christ the book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. What greater revelation, we're, we're talking about revelation, not the book. What greater re revelation of the word of God, but through Jesus Christ, who is the word, John 1.1, 1, 1, and is the word, John, 1 John chapter 5. That was... Our number four study of the series of the Word of God.